Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Addicted to Success podcast. Today, I am here with the 22-year-old, uber, awesome, incredible, motivational speaker. She is truly an inspiration. I had the opportunity to speak with her uh, on stage at the UK event. It's called the Self-Development Event of the Year. It was in London uh, last month. And I was moved. I was totally moved. I love her piece on emotional intelligence, which I think is highly important in this day and age. Forget IQ, it's all about the EQ, right? And I was just absolutely moved by her story and the way that she delivered her message. She's only 22 years old. I mean, she's, she's pushing and she's really making a difference in this world. And I'm just so excited to introduce to you Ashley Zahabian, who, also goes by name Zahabi Baby, if you want to call it that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so welcome to the Addicted to Success podcast, Ash. Thank you so much, Joel. It was so nice working with Joel um, back in London, and it's, it's a pleasure to be back. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. So Ash, for the listeners who aren't familiar with your work, that haven't seen or heard those motivational videos with your voice in the background that gets played to millions and millions and millions... Uh, who are you and why do you do what you do? Just in a nutshell. Sure. So I started on YouTube. Um, I went through a phase of my life where I lacked emotional intelligence and it put me on my deathbed, essentially. I, I suffered with anorexia. So I kind of, when I went through, I went through four years of recovery, did some research, figured th some things out and decided to share that with the world. Um, was able to spread it. The reason I do why I do do what I do is because I saw where it took me and to be in a place of my deathbed to see that something so powerful like the human brain can bring us to such a low place. Um, if it can be reversed, I feel a responsibility to give it back. And now that God gave me the opportunity to live uh, another day, I feel like it's, it's my responsibility to give that back. Love it, Ash. Love it, Ash. You're blessed. So let's go back on what you just said. You said uh, that you lacked emotional intelligence, right? So what is emotional intelligence? Because there's a lot of people out there that don't, still don't get what that means. They hear EQ and, and they hear, you know, you speaking about it and a number of other uh, highly influential leaders that are in the self-development space mention it now and then. But I know that you're really committed to it. So, so tell us, what is it and, and why is it so important? So emotional intelligence is the ability to feel and be aware of an emotion, but when it's an unwanted emotion, when it's necessary to have the brain capacity and the control to fight against that emotion. Uh, the reason it's so important is because every single decision we make is emotional. And every decision regarding whether we wake up on time, what, how we respond to people, how we drive, how we go in the workforce, how we make a sale. And if every decision is emotional and you cannot be able to argue that emotion, you find yourself stuck. Um, mine was a little bit extreme, of course. I, I li There's parts of the brain that were too emotional for me um, and were all born this way. I just didn't know how to handle it. And so I let that carry me away into anorexia. Um, but I think a lot of people go through this in life. Sometimes it's drugs, sometimes it's alcohol, sometimes it's relationships, sometimes it's, it's, it's this. Sometimes it's our phone. Um, whatever that is that makes you feel emotionally good if you cannot control that it's very hard to move ahead love that answer love that answer you know it's interesting when you just put up your phone then like this and you're like it's a phone it triggered something off for me and what it is is lately i've been pushing really hard to not be distracted right it's yeah. like blocking the times out because i feel like we're in a day and age right now where one of the most golden things that you can acquire is the ability to focus because Absolutely. there's just so much noise. It's ridiculous how much distraction is out there. Uh, I was speaking with a, an internet marketing expert and he was saying to me that it's, getting, it's even getting harder for people to make a decision on whether they want to actually join a program or buy something because there's just so, like they'll watch a webinar and be like, man, that was, that's an awesome presentation. And, you know, giving that person due respect because it was a great delivery and, and that's exactly what they need. But then they're like, they get a notification, they check their Facebook, all of a sudden they're lost in the scroll of the Facebook newsfeed and they've forgotten to even join the program. And then they just like are still the same person 
in the life as they were the day before and they just continue that and so that's like i mean that's somebody that at a higher level that wants to self-develop but like still isn't in tune with eq and focus what what do you really feel is the key to tap into more of your eq because i feel like we all have it it's just revealing more of it and and and, and amplifying it well, so the thing is, when you're when you're born, you don't have it because we're born with the emotional part of our brain. A baby comes out of a womb, and all they have is this emotional part of the brain called the amygdala. It sits in the back of our brain, and it's why a baby comes out crying. It's why a baby throws things. It's why a baby has no idea what's, what is going on. Cannot read facial expression. Right? They they don't have any logic. Um, as you grow older, the last part of your brain to develop is this rational part, which is what makes a good emotionally intelligent decision. And the reason being is because with all these distractions even today people are born not born but people are strengthening this emotional part by picking up the phone every two seconds by caring so much i i admit it i put up a picture and i check my phone like how many likes did i get right like it's so it's so annoying but you do it um and if we could just strengthen the prefrontal part prefrontal cortex which is the, the rational part of our brain then we'd have the ability to differentiate between a good decision and an emotional decision and the way to do that one way to do that is meditation. So meditation actually has been scientifically proven through research. Um, they put a few MRI scans up and people who meditated over time, short amount of at least eight weeks, like two months of meditating, was able to weaken the amygdala, which is the emotional part, and strengthen the prefrontal cortex. And that's just one way that like, not even just like saying that it works, scientifically on an MRI scan, it shows that it strengthens the activity in the rational part of our brain. Um, so there's different things that you can do and such like that, but you, you said it yourself, focus is so hard to do, but when you could sit there and over time silence the brain, it's no longer in control of you and you, you become in control of it. Love it. I love it. Yeah. Cause so many people feel like they don't have control over their mind. They're letting your, their mind just do the unconscious robotic, like, Oh, I'll make the decision for you. Let's go to the habit part of your mind and which is the unconscious, right? And just... Well it's the amygdala. Life, right? Yeah. It, it's yeah. the emotional part. And the thing is, like, when what happens is something happens to us. Let's say you go through a breakup. And whatever feeling that's negative, the amygdala stores that memory. And the amygdala, the reason that it's there is for survival. It's there so that if you're in an actual mm. endangered situation, it reacts like this impulse. That's why we have impulse. But it doesn't know the difference between danger and a broken heart or, you know, being sad over what, being scared over an animal that's about to eat you versus being scared over something else like anxiety. So it reacts as soon as you feel something negative, it's going to react. And by the time it communicates to the rational part, which differentiates, Hey, is this really a dangerous situation or can I calm down? You've already acted. And so the meditation trains the brain to communicate quicker. And you'll see on an MRI scan that the, the activity that's going on in the prefrontal cortex is so much more. It's increased proving that meditation actually improves this ability to do so. It's really interesting. That's insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah. I'm a big believer in meditation. Yeah, I, I know that my day is just that much better when I meditate. I was actually speaking with uh, Gabby Bernstein uh, yesterday, and she was saying how she was writing a book and she was feeling overwhelmed and trying to really force to write her book because she'd have like an hour chunk to write it and she was doing so much in her day that she was like i need to write my book i need to write my book and she sat down and she's like you know what no this isn't right I, I didn't get into it for this i shouldn't be sitting down trying to force so she went off and meditated and and came out of the meditation like 20 minutes later and then she sat and wrote a really powerful piece for a book in half an hour instead of an hour but she still was able to fit in the meditation and so it's just like that's how I feel. Sometimes you need to meditate. Like it, it gets your, it recalibrates your mind. It gets you back to that space where you can think clearly. And over a longer stretch of time, if you can be like that, you're going to be way more effective than trying to like scammer and like make things happen with like lower energy and less focus. It's yeah. And it's not going to happen at first. Like your, your brain is, it's physically not going to be able to meditate at first. Like hundred percent. You're not going to be able to do it. You're going to sit there, <laughs> try and focus on something and you're just not going to be able to do it. Um, but over time you're going to slowly, you have to, it's almost like getting to know an animal that, that a, a dangerous animal when you're training a dog or training a horse or training, you have to first look at it for a few weeks. Then you got to feed it. Then you got to talk to it. Then you got to pet, pet it. 
Then you got to put one foot on it. Then you got, you know, you slowly get to know it and it starts to learn. Even their amygdala starts to calm down and say, hey, I'm not endangered. This person, I'm getting to know this person. And the same thing with your brain, you have to build that trust. And if you don't spend time with your own, you know, different parts of your brains, not that it's never going to work, you know, just because you work your bicep doesn't mean your abs aren't working at the same time, but you, you want to focus and, and strengthen one area um, to be able to function correctly. And that's up to you. Wow, Ash. You're so wise. You're 22 years old and you're, you're already wanting to, and I think this is the key, making the decision that you're, you want to commit to uh, an area in life, which is like understanding the brain. I think it's, it's, it's not a normal thing for a 22 year old to be like, oh, this is what I want to get into. Unless you're studying neuroscience, neuroscience or you know, you're, yeah. you're, a, you're a, a doctor or so, but for you, you're really excited about this and like what how do you feel like you can bring more of this into self development well i'm excited because i'm actually bringing this into schools and i think this is big for students because um the differentiating i did some research and one of the research pieces that i did was the differentiating factor between a person who can actually get straight a's and not is activity here and it's interesting because it's the ability to focus it has nothing to do with this person smarter this person's this it's one person can sit in class and all the information just goes whoo because their emotional brain is talking to them that they cannot focus on what the professor is saying or when they're going to study it's like meditating you're trying to focus on one thing but you can't because your brain's talking to you versus a straight A student who could sit there pick up a book this big right pick up a book like something that looks so boring and actually have the ability to sit here for three hours read through it do the problems and not think of your boyfriend or not think of your phone and not think of what you're doing later um, that was the differentiating factor and that's why when people want to uh you know give up on their work or what they're doing i tell them i said look it's it's a trained ability it's a, i'm no different than you you're no different than anybody else we know that i met you and felt like you were a regular human being you met me and felt like i was a regular human being but it's the ability that you honed in on your focus i honed in on mine and uh, bringing that to schools for me is super important because i feel like long term as it spreads into different universities and high schools and middle schools um, it'll be able to actually impact not just the individuals themselves, but the labor force and the the business world and things of like that. And it's a big problem now. You have millennials coming into companies; they cannot focus, and it is the management's it is their job to take care of these people. But it is also the school's opportunity to do that. This way, that we can get more utility out of employees of different businesses and companies. And I know you have some employees. I'm sure you've been through the "Hey, are you working?" or <laughs> "I need this done" type of thing. Um, and the difference is just focus. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's exciting to see where we can go as as you know the understandings uh, unfold. You know, I think that I had a conversation with someone recently in the self development space, and uh, th what they were saying essentially was, it's sad to see that some people that are showing up now in the industry, the younger like like millennials, and you know even people around my age too. I'm like borderline millennial, 29. <laughs> and, um, and he's saying like, you know, it's, it's kind of sad to see that like it feels like some of it's watered down. And I was like, but that's not, the, that shouldn't be the case because if anything, it should only be better, right? Like we have right. like these shoulders to stand on, like these giants in the industry that are just, they've done so well, Louise Hay, and you've got people like, even like Oprah Winfrey, you know, you've got Tony Robbins, you've got Jack Canfield. I mean, we can learn from all these people. Uh, I just think that everything's becoming more advanced. I, I know a guy uh, who invested in a company. Uh, it's, it's essentially they're putting chips in brains. And like some people don't agree with this. Some people do. I think it's exciting. Putting chips in brains, you can switch off uh, anxiety, switch off depression, and you can switch on focus. And like it's just insane what you can do with the brain and where we're going in the future. Where do you see emotional intelligence going in the future? It's interesting. I think it's become pretty relevant recently. Um, I think that more and more people are not labeling it as emotional intelligence. I mean, there's been a debate on whether emotional intelligence is an intelligence. I think it is because if you look up intelligence, it says the ability to apply some sort of a knowledge. Um, and as long as you can't, it's not enough to just know, it, it, you have to really do. Um, I don't agree with the test. Uh, there's a lot of tests out there that test emotional intelligence. I don't agree with them. I think you have to be in crisis to test whether somebody can actually apply it. You can't just yeah. sit here and be like, yeah, I would yeah. do this or I would do that. 
you know, you have to be able to apply it. So it's, I think that there's a, a bubble and it's stuck. We're kind of stuck in that kind of progression because they're like, how do we test emotional intelligence? How do, how do you know, um, employers know when they're looking for people to hire, are they emotionally intelligent? Are they not? And it, it's hard to test something like that. But I always do say that the 1% that are above can easily pick up of somebody who's emotionally intelligent. I think it's the only reason I've I've been fortunate enough to work with specific people at a young age um, and get where I want to do, get into schools. I mean, I'll be a professor next year. It's kind of weird to say that, but <laughs> I don't know if I can make like Guinness Book of World Records for youngest professor, but um, I, I think that the ability to, just like you walk into a karate, um, you, you know, you go up to a black belt and you say, can I become a black belt? They're going to be like, no, you need to first become a white belt. But if a black belt comes up to another black belt, they immediately know. It's like a psychological thing. It's subconsciously, we know an expert knows another expert. And yeah. so I was able to kind of trickle my way. I think it is so important. It is the white belt of everything in life. If you can skip over the white belt, every other belt is going to be messed up. But it's fundamental. It's really fundamental. And I think it needs to be taught in schools younger. I think it will be taught in schools. I know some other universities, Harvard teaches it. Yale had opened up a center of research of emotional intelligence. Um, they're allowing students to study it now. It's coming. It's becoming a big thing in sports and athletics, uh, athletics um, teamwork, management, leadership. It's huge. It's really huge. I think people just don't tap into it enough, and that's really where I want to hone in and become like the go-to of how to teach emotional intelligence in a different way. Um, and we've had the, people like Daniel Goleman and things like people like that, psychologists who have popularized these things. But I think there's just so much more to go into it that hasn't been touched yet. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna absolutely change the game, Ash. I know it because you you're so hungry and focused, right? You're tapping into your emotional intelligence. And you're a great example of what it takes to really go deep with a subject and, and share it with the world. And so I saw that on stage too. You, you've not only got the story, you also understand a lot of the science behind it all. And I think that there's like a, there's a craft to, to grabbing a really complex subject and simplifying it. Like if you can do that, you're good. You're golden. Like if you can do that, you're going to attract a lot of people into wanting to hear that message. And so I think really it's like how do you make emotional intelligence sexy, right? That's what you want to do. You want to be able to like make it something that like is easily processed and, and people can then go out and share as well what they know about it. Because I think it's, it's great that you're highlighting the fact that it's important. We have this conversation a lot. I, I talked to Gary Vaynerchuk about it too. Like he's a huge fan of the idea of emotional intelligence and everything. I know you've spoken on stage with him. How do you apply emotional intelligence into your career yourself? Because you speak on stage, you flow very well in front of a camera, uh, and you know it, you just you've, you've been able to balance a, a schedule where you go to school, still study, and you get to travel the world and speak on stage. It's, it's just insane. So, how are you applying it yourself? A lot of it goes into the regular like business aspect of like managing people. I always say if you're in a business, you're in the business of managing people, 100%, every business. Um, and you need to know how to fight against emotion. I mean, there's certain people, for example, I, I was working with this Irish person the other day, and I didn't know that Irish people don't talk about their problems. Like, they just don't. It's it's To them, it's something between that person and God. So if there's an argument, they don't want to talk about it. It's like, why would I talk to you? I have to talk to God about that. It's a religious thing. And I had no idea. And so there was this argument with two people and I was here talking to the other person, like you should talk to this person. And, and you know, I had to hold myself back and understand this person does not want to talk about it. And to them, that's okay. It doesn't bother them. It bothered me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I wanted to talk about it, but to think of the other person, I needed to learn how to fight against that emotional feeling that was unwanted at the time. And so little things like that, you can apply it in. Versus on a larger scale, you know, me being able to travel and be in school, like time management for me, my goodness, like I have so much on my plate. I'm taking a full course of classes. I'm a straight A student. Um, I'm studying for my GMATs. I'm writing my book. I'm traveling. I'm speaking, creating content, my TED talk. I'm doing research. I'm creating a course for my being a professor. That takes so much sacrifice. Like I want to go out with my friends. I want to do these things. I can't. Like I, I've got to learn to say no to my impulse and it might look 
very simple on the outside, but I mean, I'm sure you even know, like there's so much sacrifice that goes behind that. Hey, I need to sleep early. I really can't have this conversation right now. Um, dating. I can't do that. If you're, if you're free all the time and you're going to be on me like that, I, I can't, I can't do that <laughs> as much as I want to. Um, and it's, it's been difficult. Like you have to find people that are busy themselves. You've got to find people that respect your time. Um, I've lost a lot of friends because I had to keep who I am and, and, and that's not easy to do. Um, studying God is a big thing for me, but it's a lot of saying no to yourself. And it, I think every single reward that I've ever gotten was saying no right now for something bigger later. And I think delayed gratification is something, I think that is, that is one of the major factors of how emotional intelligence plays in a career. Yeah. Patience, patience is definitely key. Uh, I relate so much to you, Ash, because I remember, you know, I started addicted to success six years ago. And it was probably about a year in, I was totally on fire. I was just like, I just saw the vision. It was coming together. Just, I, I was getting so much traction. It was working, right? And the partner that I was with at the time, she was like, what are you doing? You need to be going out and hanging out with your friends. <laughs> and I was like, nah, I'm doing this. And she's like, it's really bad. You need to socialize. I'm like, yeah, I know. I speak to people in the industry that I'm in right now. And I'm, that's it. Like, I feel fulfilled. And she's like, no, you need to go and have like hu live human interaction. And I agree to a certain extent. I was like, yeah, you know, you can't, you're right. I tried it a bunch of times. Came back, didn't want to commit. I was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. The people that I hang around, I'm like, I have to separate to elevate. Like, I can't be around these people anymore. It's not working for me. And she couldn't understand it at the time. She's like, I don't, she's like, you need to. And I'm like, that's your value. My values have shifted. And I said, I know one day I'm going to have some really epic friends. And it was only a matter of like two or three years of like just really going hard in the paint on the dream and just like going into it, right? And now I just have so many powerful friends. Millions of people it's all watching. And millions of people. It's, yeah. But this is the thing too. It got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm ready for friendships. And I wanted to be friends with everybody. And But, but what I want now after like – you know, increasing the emotional intelligence and really maturing is that I want deep relationships with a small group of people, like with just a tight circle and just want to go super deep with them than to try and be friends with everybody. I, I want to help everybody and serve and, and show up as often as possible, but like to have a really deep relationship, I'm good with a, with a, with a tribe of like a tight tribe and, and let's do it, you know, away we go. So yeah, the thing too is like when you hang out with somebody who like, I, obviously, you get like, hey, there's this huge party coming out. Let's fly out here. Let's go. And it's like, I would go, but what is the return on investment? What? <laughs> like, and I don't mean to be selfish in that sense, but like realistically, with respect for my time and your time, what is the return on investment? Why are we doing this? Oh, you know, like, I think it's be nice to meet. I, I, I can't do, I can't be away like for five days and just have fun. Like, I'm not, if, if I'm building a relationship for my future, future, you know, Father of my children, different story. Family, different story. But that's a return on investment. What is the return on investment of just going out and sitting there and watching people drink or party or walk around aimlessly? I, I, not that I get irritated, but I end up coming home and I'm like, well, that was like a negative investment. Like I look at it. <laughs> I'm like, well, <laughs> that's so nerdy of you, Ash. No, <laughs> no, no I, I, I agree. I feel I'm the such same a way. Person. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs> like I literally mathematically have to calculate investment like if I'm going out with this person what is it going to be if I'm going to London right how many people are going to be there what is the return how many people am I helping is it going to get me any deals is it going to close anything so I mean realistically yeah it, it, I do <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think uh, Howard Schultz as well said something along the lines of he's the, the the founder of Starbucks he said something along the lines of like if I had coffee with every person that wanted to have coffee with me I'd get nothing done like I wouldn't be the founder of Starbucks, <laughs> you know, so. And I don't, I don't give my time away freely at all. Um, anything, not even texting. I have, I have like 70 unread messages. My email's overflowing, but like, again, that's up to the other person. Like I said, an emotional, emotionally intelligent person knows another emotionally intelligent person. A black belt knows another black belt. So when you message me and I could see the return on investment and I know where your head's at immediately, I will answer. 
if you message me, I'm going to answer you. I met you. I know how you think. If somebody else messages, but if somebody messages me, hey, oh my God, da, 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 you're less likely to get a specific answer if there's no return. The only yeah. thing on that is I see it just giving me some gratitude. I always appreciate gratitude. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's interesting because I feel like uh, as I've emotionally intelligently if you put it like that emotionally intelligently matured over the years i feel like i've been able to connect with more personality types too like, is that a thing is it like you you it's more of a you start to I, I guess sharpen your social sword like you just get better at socializing and connecting with people of all different types and and characters does that make sense absolutely because the thing is you become more flexible and adaptable um, because you're not only thinking of, about what's normal to you, but now you're able to stop and listen and serve and other people and actually start to understand that there are differences in people and you actually start to question what the differences are because you care about understanding rather than just saying, well, I don't agree with that, right? Like I'm able to now work with somebody who's strictly, strictly Irish because I'm able to take a step back and be like, well, that's not how he does things. <laughs> let me let me hold back a little bit. Um and and even like I find myself able to communicate with people who are naturally angry. Um, you know, somebody hit my car one time, and I remember specifically I came out and I was like, "It's okay, <laughs> it happens." You know, <laughs> and angry, and I was like, "It's okay." And he's like, "I'm so mad. Why did I do that?" And like at the by the end of the conversation, he was like, "If you hadn't reacted that way, I would have done some crazy things, mm. right?" So it's it is you become more likable. Wow, that's a superpower, Ash. Like to be able to get out of a car after a car accident and be like, "Are you okay?" Yeah. Yeah, my, yeah. My, uh, my if it was, please. if it was you, that's that's cool. You put yourself in the in the shoes of the other person. Yeah. My mentor shared with me a story where uh, he was driving his car and his his kid was in the back. They had a bicycle right in the back of the car in the trunk. We call it the boot in Australia. In the trunk, right? And. Gosh. A, a guy behind him was in like a truck, like a pickup truck and had smashed, like they stopped at the lights. He wasn't paying attention. He smashed into the back. The bicycle went, went in and hit his son in the head and like cut his head and then, you know, blew out the back windows. And in that moment, he, he told himself, he, was, he looked and he saw what had happened and, and he was saying to himself, no story, no problem. No story, no problem. No story, no problem. He kept saying it. And he got out of the car and he walked up to the guy and he could see the guy was trying to light a cigarette. And, and then he had to tell himself that story, that, that again, no story, no problem. And then he's like, are you okay, sir? And he's like, the guy was shaking. He was just like, thought that this, he was coming up to beat him up. And, and that's the thing. It's like, that shows true emotional intelligence to be able to do it in that moment. To be able to step up and be like, it, that's the I, test I, I'm it. taking control. You have to be in crisis Love to it. test the ability yeah and that's not the thing like you cannot put i cannot tell you you know it's like me putting a test in front of you and saying um you know if you were in this situation what would you do obviously you're, you know you're being tested on emotional intellect you want a higher score you're gonna put that's the right thing to do <laughs> you know what i mean and that's it's so lame for me for me it's it's really putting somebody in a situation of crisis where their amygdala is screaming yeah. and then saying what are you gonna do uh -huh. what are you gonna do that's it that's the magic right there Ash, this has been an awesome interview. Where can we uh, go to connect with you online? Yeah, um, Instagram is a big one for me. I'm very active on Instagram. Uh, so my handle is just my name, at Ashley Zahabian. Um, and Twitter, same thing. My Snapchat's a little different, Ashley Fittishte. It's my real name. <laughs> <laughs> Fittishte. So that's Ashley, F-E-R-E-S-H-T-E-H. -E -E um, and those are my three main ones, so let's not get too crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. And what I usually do is this. Just before we, we part, first of all, I, I really appreciate you. I see the impact that you're already having. And I'm just really excited to see people like you, people like Caleb Maddox, like a lot of the younger generation really step up. Um, I just want to say you got my full support. Like I'm here. I'm here for you guys too, you know, and... Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited to see how far you guys can go with this and how much you can unfold as an individual. I think it's going to be, it's really exciting for me to watch you guys do that. And I'm sure the rest of the world is, is excited for you too. So just Thank keep, you. keep it up, keep going. 
All right, you could. I would, I would like to add things. one thing. Um, I think one of the main questions that you probably get a lot, I get a lot, um, is about this motivational speaking. How do I become a speaker? I'm sure you get this all the time. Yes. Um, it's probably one of the most popular questions I get. Um, and I would just like to say one of the differentiating factors for me in getting 10 times more speaking engagements was not being a motivational speaker and actually finding something new like a research that really brought tangible value to somebody. Because now, once I had the research, once I had like scientific things that back it up, and it's not just words and blah, 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 it's like this really is a scientific thing. It's, neuro it's neurological, it's educational, um, it's professional. Um, the more professional institutions started to reach out, I just got ability to speak at like um, high quality Ivy Leagues. I got the opportunity to speak at conventions with professors and superintendents and political things and that that's really where your sweet spot is so if anybody here has a passion to share something um, I think everybody's in the business of sharing some sort of their art you have to learn how to get people to consume it if you want to do well in the music industry in athletics and anything but having something different and not just words yes. something yes. tangible something that allows you to be a researcher I, I look at myself as a researcher I do a lot of research maybe an author soon um things of that sort and, and stay away from like the whole idea of just getting on a stage uh, and i think you you can agree that if you didn't have tangible business experience to actually you know materialize for people it doesn't get anywhere so um do the work and make yourself worth the price that's going to be paid oh my god ash i love that you slipped that one in there like we we're about to, to jump out and you're like hey i think this is really important you're right it is it's so important uh, you know what's funny I think people need to be very careful they need to ask themselves a question am I doing this for significance or am I doing this for service that's emotional intelligence is your yeah. is your amygdala yeah. screaming for attention what is it what, what is the pain you're feeling that is trying to serve what is being on I remember I was in London I, they, they gave me a mic and they put me on the stage and I was like can I get off the stage like <laughs> I don't want to be on the stage <laughs> want to be in front of people to help them right yeah. and and i think that's that's really what's important is to not let the amygdala speak strengthen the rational part of your brain allow the rational part to speak and the rational part of the brain will say do these people really need to hear what you're saying mm -hmm. or do you really need to just talk to someone go get a therapist you need to talk go get a therapist <laughs> <laughs> but if you really have something to share then make it worthwhile <laughs> i love it i love it ash so wise so amazing Thanks so much for joining us. Ash, Thanks, we wrap every interview up with this last question. And sure. the question is, if you were to deliver your last 30 seconds speech to the world, what would that last 30 seconds sound like? If you can learn to love God, something bigger than you that you cannot see, and learn to obey something you cannot see, you cannot, nobody else could see the reward that you're going to get from that then it becomes a lot easier to actually obey the people around you and to respect the people around you and to actually see the reward.